story number one. Netflix is taking over sports, boy, just like they do everything else. Anime, they came for it. Reality TV, they coming for it. International shows and translations, they coming for it. They got it. But now, oh, rom-coms, don't let me forget that. They coming for it. Guess what? They coming for your sports, too. People thought they would leave sports alone. Nope. Theo, how does this have you feeling? You're the force of sports guy here. <laughs> I'm the sports guy. The sports That's authority. Right, the sports authority. Just be in right now, live, freaking news. Yeah, man, Netflix is just starting to dominate everything. I just saw a recent report of how they brokered a deal with Warner Brothers to, to get all their more reach, the 12 of the last DC films. They're going to drop on Netflix December 1st. So that's including HBO shows are not pouring over to Netflix. So it does seem like Netflix is starting to win, you know, because they're the only profitable streaming service out there starting to win. The, this war against streaming. So I think the war is almost over, Mr. Punch. <laughs> just like it has given up. But with that being said, the big take, the takeaway from Netflix is are they going to get the more live type programming like news and of course sports. And the big thing with Netflix is, I don't know if you knew, they had two reality shows that popped up on the scene that kind of took off a little bit for them and they were in the sports area. One was F1 racing and the other was golf. Golf is the known quantity that did pretty well for them. But F1 was a surprise because anything about racing, Americans don't really care about F1 racing. NASCAR? Sure. But F1 racing with the sleek cars, we all play pole, pole position, so we know, or Gran Turismo. So yeah. what those cars look like is really a European sport. And it's one of those things like, they, I don't think they even had any races here in the U.S. But because of this reality show where you actually got to know the racers and it was like living their lives, it blew up on Netflix, there's a lot of Americans got exposed to F1. And because of that, now I was in Vegas. They're now going to have their first ever night race in, on the Vegas Strip. So you have these cars going down at 200 miles per hour down the Vegas Strip, turning those hairpin turns, and it's going to be exciting. And it was a mess, though. Uh, you know, uh, right before last this week, it was happening. We're filming this about a week before it opens. It happens next weekend on November 18th. And I say that to say is like Netflix is influencing what's possible because it all uh, made it more popular. And then because of that, they're going to have the first live sports competition where they're going yeah. to have these golf players combined with these uh, drivers, these race car drivers in a kind of a golf competition. And they're basically going to sell advertisement on it. And they're going to do the whole kind of CBS, ABC kind of sports rigmarole. It's called the Netflix Cup, the first live television televised sporting event. Uh, yeah, Mr. Benjamin, they come for sports. This is the, I wouldn't be surprised if this goes off well for them. Right now, NBA TV rights are up, coming up. A yeah. lot of people are going to bid for it. We know Apple is probably going to bid for it. Amazon, we've already got, we already talked about this Black Friday football game coming up um, in a couple of weeks. I wouldn't be surprised if Netflix puts their bid in to get some NBA games. What do you think about this sports live, I, I live think action? It, I, I like it, man. I think it's really intriguing because you, you can't just wholesale. You can, but I suppose. But most times these institutions don't just wholesale come in and take over you know, the spot. What they do is they take a, a slight sliver or a certain event or a certain chunk. Like if they have an all-star game maybe, or a special exhibition series of matches that might get relegated to this other platform or duplicated on this other platform if it's not wholesale exclusive to it. How does Netflix make its entryway into this? Maybe you could have like the three-point contest and the slam dunk contest. Maybe that moves over to Netflix or maybe it starts somewhere over there, or maybe there's a new type of introduction they make a hey, mid-season behind the scenes with these characters and these players maybe that plays well on netflix i don't know i remember back in the day when you and i were watching wrestling how all of a sudden it's like you had thursday night thunder and that showed up on uh, one station and you had like other stations doing this and it was just like this weird little play of getting audiences and getting chunks of time to to showcase things so I think Netflix is really coming with this and I'm really excited to see it actually, because I think this 
will start to bring it out of the feeling that it has of this underground kind of, it still has this new underground spirit to it, right? Or is that just me? I don't know. Yeah, it does. Netflix is the originator of this whole concept, right? Of streaming. So it just makes sense for them to innovate faster and, and better than everyone else and do it better and be the most profitable one out there. But this sports on streaming, I think it's starting to get some legs. We talked about Warner Bros. So Max is starting to, they have access to TNT content. So that's a lot of NBA games. They're showing NCAA basketball games. So there's a lot of content that, you know, Max can show live. Uh, Amazon is doing it. They have Thursday night live. They have the Thursday night show that they won and paying in themselves for that one game. And then now they're going to have Black Friday. And then Apple TV has been doing a lot of baseball games, right? Every time you turn it on to the baseball season, there was a, another game. And then Peacock TV, they just, I don't know if you saw that. I was going around to different, I was getting my hair cut last Saturday. And then I went to the comic book store and they were playing live WWE action because it was on Peacock. Last week, it was the, what's it? The one in the desert they do every year. And it was like, uh, I guess if you had Peacock service, you could just watch it for free. I have the Peacock service. I put up, opened it up. I said, sure enough, could watch all the favorite, the Miz. And it was like, we're live action happening across the world. <laughs> and like, yeah, man, live sports is coming for streaming. And so I'm there for, it. it's going to be interesting. These, so that means to me, cause a lot of the streaming services that can afford this. They have deep pockets like the Apples, like the Amazons, yeah. like the Netflix. So I'm assuming that these, all these sports entities, they're going to just get so much more money because now there's, they're just going to be able to, because right now you have net, network TVs holding on as much as they can to sports. Yeah. So they're going to pay as much as they can. Then you got cable still hanging on, right? They're going to pay as much as they can. They got these streaming services. So you got these three buyers that's going to bid up everything. NFL is going to get richer, NBA is going to get richer, ML, NLB is going to get richer. So you have all these kind of bidders out there for these live TV sports. Yeah, man. I want to see Amazon, Netflix come through with uh, their version of Wide World of Sports. Because in cool. this era, what's it going to be? It's going to be like the World Wide Web of Sports. You're going to have your, your al not alternative sports, but you've got your F1, maybe throw some lacrosse in there. Strike a deal with Ice Cube, have Big Three on Netflix. Pickleball, you know, like, they could definitely ask. Oh, thing. yeah. Get Usher's old self out there playing pickleball. You know? <laughs> I love I it. Love I love it. it. Yeah. So good stuff. We'll keep an eye on this going forward. Absolutely.